1946, there was no more room left for expansion. So reluctantly, the Mott's decided to leave this area and they established their factory in Trenton, New Jersey. The Third Avenue Bridge, which comes over besides the, um, uh, the Mott Iron Works, was uh, first built in 1797. This is not it. Uh, when the Morrises, Lewis Morris, the signer of the Declaration of Independence, uh, wanted to build what is now Third Avenue, he also petitioned to build a bridge across the Harlem River. It was made out of wood in 1797 and was originally called the Harlem Bridge, and it was a toll bridge. Uh, by the 1860s, that bridge had to be replaced, and it was replaced uh, by a cast iron bridge that was manufactured by the American Bridge Company. The American Bridge Company was a subsidiary of the Mott Iron Works. So the original cast, the, uh, the second bridge, the cast iron bridge, which consisted of three arches across the river, uh, was built right here and put into place, very convenient. Uh, it was finished in 1863, and the very first horse car line uh, to come into the Bronx came over the bridge at that point. Uh, the horse car line went from here and up to Fordham Road and was called the Huckleberry Line. Uh, that was not the official name of it, that's what the people called it. And the reason why they called it is that it moved so slowly that it was possible to board the thing, get off and go to the nearby fields and pick huckleberries and get back onto the same car. Uh, the name Huckleberry Line lasted well into the 20th century even though it was a trolley car line and was not the same company. Uh, the current bridge on the site is called the Third Avenue Bridge. It was built in 1898, and it uh, connects Mott Haven with Harlem, and it's uh, 300 feet long. Now, in order to give you a better overview of the Mott Iron Works, uh, we're going to take a, a walk a little bit on the walkway of the bridge, and when we go there, I would hate to talk because the traffic uh, produces so much noise, it's almost impossible for, me to, for you to hear me. So I'll point out to you what you should see from the walkway of the bridge. First of all, down here you see uh, straight ahead uh, some very small structures, originally of red brick and painted yellow, and which is now peeling off. Supposedly, that was the very first factory building of the Mott Iron Works. It is now used uh, for auto repair. Uh, just beyond that building, you will see an indentation in the coastline. That is the last remnant of the Mott Haven Canal. And when you get up to the walkway, take a look at some of the writing that's over on this building to the top, and it will tell you that it says J.L. Mott Ironworks incised into the brick. So let's take a look up there. I'll point it out to you, but I'm afraid I'll have to be like silent pictures from now on. All right? But, and now you see the indentation in the coastline. Uh, that is the last remnant of the uh, Mott Haven Canal. And as you turn to the right, you see a low-slung building that is uh, uh, originally red brick and had been painted in yellow brick. Uh, the yellow uh, paint is beginning to peel off. That supposedly is the first building of the uh, Mott Iron Works, which uh, still stands. On the uh, building itself, there is just below the uh, uh, the roof line, uh, incised in the rocks, the J. L. Mott Iron Works. If you look very carefully, you'll see it. Okay. Bricks. See, straight ahead. Wasn't there built one of the Civil War, either the Monitor or the Merrimack? Not here. Not here. No. When was that building uh, built on? That was built on the side of the, of the uh, mansion. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. And that was what, the, in the mid? mid no, this, uh, th this, this would be... Uh, 1870s? No, this, the, yeah, this would definitely be late, late 19th century at the very earliest. That late? I mean, yeah. late, late 19th? Yeah. Oh. I'm just looking at the architecture. It's uh, very difficult to determine with industrial architecture, but... Yeah. Uh, well, so I'm looking at brickwork and things like that. A lot of uh, those uh, uh, chimneys. No, those are not chimneys. <laughs> no. No. That's just that. That's just decoration. Oh, that's it. That's oh. it. Okay. 
looks like it's yeah, so is it the brink or is it make a speed run in yeah. the Harlem River, up above, up uh -huh. above, uh -huh. through the tribal, uh, through the Washington, the old Washington uh -huh. Bridge. Uh -huh. I don't know, they knocked off a hundred and ten Yeah. I want you, by the way, to take a look at the distance between this structure on the Mount Haven Canal and Harlem, because I will tell you a story later that has something to do with the, uh, the distance between the two. All right? Now, there was a fire in interest uh, uh, about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the, uh, the people who own the building still want to rent it out for industrial purposes. Okay, let's go, uh, let's go back. There was another foundry of ice, Spike Dival? That's correct, the Johnson Iron Foundry. Is it the same thing as this one? No, the Johnson Iron Foundry is specialized in munitions. All right. Now, Third Avenue actually marks the boundary line of the historic Mott Haven that Jordan L. Mott purchased. This was the easternmost boundary of his property. So from here on out, as we are going to be east of Third Avenue, technically speaking, and only technically speaking, this is, that, that would not be Mott Haven. Nevertheless, the people who have lived in that neighborhood for many, many years, many, many decades, refer to it as Mott Haven, even though it is technically not. So uh, at least for historical purposes, we're now going to go off the reservation and into another area that brings us further back into Bronx history. We are going to walk across, uh, or at least along, a street that is officially Bruckner Boulevard. Now, Bruckner Boulevard is named after Henry Bruckner, who was the president of the Borough of the Bronx in the 1920s. Uh, he first got his start in business as well. Uh, he uh, bottled soda. And the brand name of his soda was You Know Us. That is the letter U hyphen N-O hyphen U-S. You Know Us. Um, now, he, he became the borough president in the, in the 1920s, and a few years after his last term, he passed away, and they named the uh, uh, Bruckner Boulevard after him. And then later on, when the expressway was built in the eastern part of the Bronx that went over Bruckner Boulevard, they called it the Bruckner Expressway. So that commemorates him. Now we're going to walk a little bit this way. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have now stepped back to the very beginnings of the Bronx. We're in front of the Kelly Furniture Warehouse at 132nd Street and Bruckner Boulevard and Lincoln Avenue. It is on this site that Jonas Bronk built his farmhouse. He wouldn't recognize the place, because <laughs> at the time, he was on the very edge of the frontier. When he came in 1639, there was nothing between Jonas Bronk and Albany. All right, that's the frontier. Now, you have to remember that the frontier then was different from a John Wayne movie. All right? Uh, Nobody really knew what frontier conditions were like when they made that big swim. Here's Jonas Bronk, a fairly wealthy man, coming to establish himself on a farm at the edge of the frontier. He built a stone house with tile roof. Now that, of course, is typical Dutch style. There were glass windows. He brought with him 11 pictures to decorate the house he also brought with him his library. And the names of the books in his library are preserved. And today, we know that Jonas Bronck had the largest library in all of the colony of New Netherlands. It consisted mostly of Lutheran and Calvinist religious works and navigation books. This is where he was. His servants lived here, established satellite farms as well. They cut down the woods to clear land to plant various types of grain as well as tobacco. They figured tobacco was a good cash crop, but I guess his profits eventually came right up in smoke. Um, he also had the materials in which to make beer because he couldn't go down to the local saloon to get his own, so he had to make them. Uh, 
It was also here in 1642 that a conference took place between the, uh, the people who were the rulers of New Netherland and the Wekwiskek Indians, who were the most warlike tribe on the mainland, in order to establish a peace treaty. From 